Hello everyone. I'm thrilled to be here today. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's been fascinating so far, really. I really enjoyed listening to all the previous uh, people that uh, participated. I'm Maya Razi, fashion designer and senior lecturer at the Shankar College of Design, Engineering and Art based in Israel. Shankar College Fashion Department is one of the 10 leading schools in the world according to the Business of Fashion rating. It might be quite surprising considering that Israel isn't the world's capital of fashion, but I think the answer is innovation. You might have heard about the term startup nation. Innovation is a key word here. I'd like to share with you today a slightly different perspective about fashion and technology. So let's travel a little bit in time. Uh, we're going back, it's 1996. I'm a fashion student at Shankar. I was fascinated with the possibilities of applying technology into fashion. This was a project I designed. In the photos, you can see the same dress called Enlightenment. It was illuminating flexible threads attached to it like neon lights later known as EL wires, often used today as Christmas lights, but it was very innovative at the time. It had a giant bag of batteries hidden under the dress, and that is actually the reason for its unique wobbly silhouette. Today, as a fashion professor, I'm still very much interested in exploring how the connection between fashion and tech can bring new ideas and concepts that could give our clothes something that is beyond their preliminary role to cover and protect us. What if technology could enable our clothes to feel and react to us, to the people around us, to our surroundings, just like a sixth sense? Can we treat them as our second skin, as an extension of our senses? This way we can broaden the possibilities and functions of our clothes endlessly and create more new human interactions between people, themselves, and their environment seamlessly by using wearable technology. But first, what is wearable tech? By definition, wearable technology are clothing and accessories incorporating computer and advanced electronic technologies. The earliest wearable tech was maybe the 16th century watch that was worn on the body as a necklace, thanks to the miniaturizing of the mechanism of the clock. The ladies wore it as a bracelet on their wrist, and only after a pilot called Alberto Santo Dumont attached a watch to a wristband so his hand could be free while flying, the wristwatch was invented. In the 17th century, the Chinese traders wore a special ring that had tiny beads like an abacus to help them calculate faster. Some of you, and uh, here you understand my age, might remember a most desirable watch in the 80s, the Casio, with a calculator that every kid dreamt of having so they could use in mass test. As you also see, uh, the version we're more familiar with is the smartwatch. In all of these cases, technology has a clear target to calculate, to count ourselves, etc. The smartwatch is already programmed to feel us, show and reflect that we didn't move enough. It tries to react, encourage, know us, but could it be more sensitive to us? Can it take into account our entire body and be embedded in our clothes? As a fashion designer, we can start to design and think about, the way, think about the way we will use fabrics, textures, silhouettes. I would like you to think that technology could be used like another tool for designers.
my clicker just died. <laughs> and okay. So today I would like to take you to behind the scenes of the design process and show as a case study a graduation project by Ori Schreiber, fashion design student from Shankar, in collaboration with Meital Dahan, an electrical engineering student, as well as Yali, a sound artist, and a group of talented dancers, which I had the honor to mentor. The project was presented in July 2020. Ori realized that she finds herself disturbed by the development of technology and the direct impact of technology on interpersonal communication and human relationships. She felt technology was changing human interaction and wanted to find a way to use technology to help enhance the interaction and connection between people. Her goal in her final project was to research whether new interactions between human can be created through clothing by embedding technology. In her research, she came across the book called Reversible Destiny by the architects Guinness and Arakawa. In this book, they question the attitude of pursu pursuing comfort blindly and suggested that our surroundings should constantly challenge and surprise our senses. Influenced by the idea, Ori decided she wanted to find a way to challenge the world and evoke feelings that technology didn't. While researching the conceptual inspiration, she also came across the work of the artist Bernard Leitner. His work presented the idea of using sound installation that deals with the audio-physical experience of spaces and objects, which are determined in form and content by movements of sound. The focus is the relationship between built structures of sound and the human body. Creating spaces with a vocabulary of sound introduces new forms of expression, the potential for a fundamentally new experience. It is above all the intensity, the rhythm, the speed of the moving sound and their interrelated variations that determine the space of the shape. But um, what does sound look like? Here you have a glimpse in Ori's uh, sketchbook as a part of her visual research for of expressing the sound waves that shapes uh, of shapes and forms. She then translated her ideas into what we call an inspiration board that captured the movements of sound waves she wanted to portray in her collection using the visual effect of moiré, crossing lines. So, you can see here in the video, she's moving two flat boards, sliding uh, one on top of the other to create an effect that is inspired by the sound waves. In the process, she tried to capture the shapes and silhouettes of sound waves in accordance with the human body. As you can see here, there are layers of uh, transparent floating fabric over a tailored suit. But when the dancers wore the garment, she realized that the movement is restricted by it. The dancers were challenged by the silhouettes and had to explore the movements that were possible and would allow flow and the restrictions that were imposed on them. And you can see this is actually the first trial of the dancer of the garment. So she's now testing the movements that actually the garment allows her to do. This is just improvising. So there is a full collaboration between the wearer, which is the dancer and the designer, the shape and the silhouette. Here in the sketchbook, you can see the design process and how the inspiration is translated into a unique garment. 
It starts with a two-dimensional sketch and then translated to a three-dimensional pattern that you can see here on the mannequin in the middle. Then we tried the first fittings uh, using calico fabric to test the shapes and make the necessary alterations before executing the real and final garment. You can see on her shoulder the kind of, uh, she put the, the real fabric just to understand how it's going to be looking like. And each outfit had a different character and silhouette that affects the dancer's choreography and movements. Can we have the sound on, please, for the for the video? Thank you. So each movement uh, has a different character, as I said, and it affects the dancer choreography and movements. The movements were then translated into different sounds and music by the sound artist Yael Blankstein, Yali. She observed each dancer and composed its individual soundtrack inspired by the movement and mutual expression of the dancer and their garment. In the collection, the difference between every outfit is shape, material, color, silhouette, and sound. If you could put the sound on as well. also a very important part of the realization of the inspiration and changes with the movements of the dancer as well. It was all developed by Uri and printed at Shankar's printing um, workshops. Here you can see how the fabric is changing by the movement. There is like a texture that is exposed only through this movement of the fabric. And this is a behind the scene of a professional photo shoot. Oh. Yeah, man, Notice how the print is changing with the movement of the So you're probably asking yourself by now, where is the technology? Well, it is all seamless and embedded inside the clothes using sensors, transmitters, and Wi-Fi. The technology allows each dancer to move freely. So the internal system, which is what we just saw here on the video that Ori was testing, uh, consists of a gyroscope sensor, which detects the movement of the dancers and the acceleration they create. 
an Arduino microprocessor transmits the most dominant movements from the dancer to the computer. All this data is processed by Ableton software, and the output is the sound that is projected through speakers around the space. The movement of every dancer is detected and sensed by the gyroscope sensor and affects the density of the sound in a different way according to each dancer's character of movement. When all the dancers dance together, an orchestrated version of the music is played. Here, I'd like to note that uh, we were working in prototype mode. Sometimes things go smoothly, but usually just when you want everything to work, it collapses. So the videos I show you today are still under development and during our work process, we were many times challenged by the technology. If you want to try this at home, be prepared for some disappointment, but for a lot of magical moments. Altogether, the goal of the project is to create a garment that challenges the wearer to think and communicate as a group in order to produce something new. Each individual movement will impact the sound that will be created and overall, the outcome reflects the total interactions between the dancers. Any movement, personal or joint, will affect the sound played in space. The clothes are dynamic and vary according to the wearer's movements and sound. We will conclude with a final presentation of the project as it was displayed in front of the critics in the final presentation. It took place this July in, in Shankar, live and Zoomed to our students and professors at home to watch. I hope you enjoy. In conclusion, I hope I've given you a new point of view, a new perspective regarding the wider possibilities of wearable technology and the way it could be used to connect people. That is, if we will use it sensibly and design with it like a raw material. I wish to thank you very much for uh, listening. I will see you soon at the panel and I hope to answer your questions. If you have any, please 
uh, try to send it right away before we would start a panel quite soon. And thank you so much for the organizers for inviting me for this uh, wonderful summit. Thank you so much. Goodbye.